Hello and welcome to Storytime with Tom and Mike. I'm Tom. And I am the computer illiterate Mike. <laughs> I don't think you should be so hard on yourself. I think you're being a little hard on yourself. We I have... can't get into my emails because I don't know how to get to them. Oh, wait. You meant Google email? Oh, yeah. That's fucking right here everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what that shit felt like to you me. You really confused me because I was like, how the fuck are you not able to get into your Gmail? All right. We won't worry about that tonight. <laughs> because we I'm won't a worry. dill. <laughs> <laughs> we won't worry about that tonight. So we had some technical issues with Skype this evening starting <laughs> off um, which caused us to start 30 minutes late so hey whatever it happens and the this, funny uh, thing was i tried to start 15 minutes earlier than we normally do so it actually ended up you know throwing us off by a 45 minute factor instead almost an entire episode <laughs> recorded yeah that's um well that's uh that's what happens when you have no budget <laughs> and yep, you're totally budget. winging it and you're totally winging it and, and working with a computer that is probably closer to the grave than to the Best Buy that you got it from. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. But, um, you'll, well, you know, maybe someday that'll change. But for today, we just have to put up with it. We work with what we get. I think it's awesome that we can just do what we do. Yeah, um, it's, yeah. And if I it was, means uh... we have to goof around for 45 minutes to get it working so be it oh uh, yeah yeah i'm at to start uh you know you know if we would normally start at uh you know 9 30 i'll have to start fucking turning everything on at uh at 8 30 to make sure that <laughs> <laughs> to make sure that i am i am prepared <laughs> well you gotta pull the you gotta pull the 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 thing on the uh, two stroke engine. You've got powering it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem the problem really was that my uh, my fucking gerbils died. So you know, oh, at this right. point, I don't have anything to run that wheel around. Yeah, yeah. I it's, use it's sad. It's sad. Mine uses water and sand. Oh um, yeah, as weights and counterbalances and stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It it was uh, created by the Dutch. Nice. Uh, yeah. I was gonna say. Einstein or something like that, but I don't. Einstein wasn't you, really you, an you artist. You definitely and... went, yeah. You definitely went uh, a little, a little different than I did on that one, which is good. Artisan. Well, he was an artisan in that he played the violin, but he wasn't really like a craftsman per se. He, that wasn't his shtick, man. He was more about like physics and like numbers and whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much, dude. I got a little bit of a story for you today. Oh, do you? Yes. Please yes, tell me a story. See, I went out today, and I'm going to start off with a little little song for you, and it goes like this. Grocery cart in the wind. All we are is grocery carts in the wind. Sitting in my space, minding my own business. Thud! <laughs> then it rolls past the car and to the waiting hands of a woman in the next aisle who just walks into the store like nothing happened. Grocery store card in the wind. <laughs> I'm fucking sitting outside the grocery store waiting as my significant other went in to get stuff for dinner. And I was like looking at my phone and this dude had a truck that looked kind of like my F-150 that was sitting across from me. And I was like daydreaming going, hmm. I wonder if that's got a five-speed in it or if that's automatic. And all of a sudden, wham! It sounded like something plowed into the car. And I'm like, holy shit. And I look in the grocery store just kind of – or grocery store. The grocery cart just kind of quickly, quietly, and nonchalantly strolls past the passenger side of the car, <laughs> misses everything else, goes through. And I'm on the uh, – I'm facing into the, fur into the space, and there's another vehicle parked in the space directly across from me. Doesn't go anywhere near that one or the one part next to it and this woman standing there waiting with like her hands out and the thing rolls right to her and she just walks off it was such a surreal experience <laughs> so it's almost like she was expecting it to hit that truck i really feel like she was using some kind of fucking jedi mind trick to pull the cart across the and she accidentally hit our car with it and she was like oh shit i can't act like i know how to do this i better fucking just you know <laughs> just stand here and just wait we were and in so, uh, yeah, so I, I think the moral of the story, though, is stop leaving your fucking carts in the spaces, you lazy cocksuckers. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, when when we were in high school, <laughs> there was like this crazy, 
storm that came through town and it was like only like literally like a minute and a half where it just beat the side of my house like crazy. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of our friends had worked at the Walmart there uh, in, in uh, uh, mushroom, by mushroom Hill, mushroom Hill. And um, you know, the one I'm talking about with the Sam's know, club. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was like the first one that we had in the area, actually. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he said that when that storm hit, it blew carts all the way out of the corrals, across the lot, into cars. A plastic playhouse got hit by that wind and slammed into his truck and damaged it. Whew. It just got ripped right off its moorings. Those things were, were, were held down by moorings. The moorings snapped. That's how hard yeah. that wind was. Well, that, coming that area through. right there is just a fucking tunnel where you're talking oh, about yeah. because there's literally like nothing really because you got the highway directly in front of it, and behind it the road runs for like a couple miles also straight. So there isn't anything to stop that wind really. Besides another mall, which apparently the wind circumvents by taking the highway. I guess I know sometimes the winds would whip up through there in the opposite direction and you'd be at the Sam's club, which I used to work at mm -hmm. as a cart guy. And I remember one day, um, one of the cart cart guys told me, Hey, you know, on the one day I was off, he's like, he's like, you know, those winds that were coming through. I'm like, yeah, they were fucking crazy. Well, they pushed a shit ton of carts up that ramp. You know, that one that goes to the highway. Yeah, <laughs> they pushed the cart. The wind pushed the carts up that hill, which is like a good 25, 30 percent grade. Yeah. And almost pushed them all the way into 322. Yeah, oncoming traffic. Oncoming yeah. traffic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Imagine how that would have looked and, and gone down. That would have <laughs> been uh, the highlight of the news day and uh, mm. really – fucking crazy i'll tell you that much yeah, i will I say though that thankfully the cart did not damage the car as far as mm. i can tell but still <sighs> the dudes were out there getting the carts i saw them it wasn't their fault some yuts parked in the next section over probably in the handicap spot the same people that leave the motorized carts outside like when it's snowing or raining and, and can't be bothered to take the fucking thing back in so that other people who need to have the accessible carts can't get them or have yeah. to have a wet ass in order to have one of them yeah it's those same people i'd like mm. to punch somebody even if it was somebody's grandmother i'd fucking punch her dentures right out of her mouth <laughs> <laughs> I, sense, I sense a little anger in you tonight. I'm you seem so angry about that. <laughs> you are, you are no, but you are seriously in a Woo. mood tonight, man. I'm, You're I'm full in a little of bit beans. of a mood. You know, I also just realized that there's boogers on the side of my chair again. Like All I've right. had this discussion. Stop wiping your fucking boogers on the side of my chair's arm rests. <laughs> I don't want to cut myself on a sharp booger. Oh, yeah, that's a double whammy there, man. That's bad news all around. That's bad news, man. I'm going to have to have a conversation about this again. I just – I don't even know what to say. My uh, my short trip, though, to the Dollar Tree and to the grocery store today did uh, give me a myriad of ideas and a couple of different things that I noticed that I had to talk about. So as we're going along here, I'll break these gems out for you. Okay. <laughs> that was the, that was the fucking the the grocery cart ordeal. Oh my goodness! Sometimes though, when I get fired up like that, I have a tendency to yawn. It's not because I'm bored or because I'm tired. It's because uh, it's because your you central know. nervous Ooh. system is 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 needing a uh, a short circuit to calm you down. Yeah, calm the doing. fuck down, son. Yeah, I'm actually not really that. I'm actually not really that wired up right now. I'm just uh, you know playing the part up a little bit for you. Of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for breaking the uh, the fucking mystique and making it all boring again, dickweed. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, you can always cut that out. Dude, I, I legitimately forgot how old I was today. Oh, yeah? I was sitting there and I was like, how fucking old am I? <laughs> am I 42? Am I 43? Or am I 44? And I actually had to break out a calculator. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. That shit happens to me all the time. I, f I forget, and then I'll go like, okay, this year is 2020, and I was born this year, so it would be – I'll be 43, and I am 42. Like that's that's what – 
that's what I have to do. I have to sit there and do that. Thing is, I don't forget how old my kids are, so that's the important thing. Yeah. My significant other, she forgets how old she is periodically, and then I'll just randomly sometimes throw out a number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just be like, I don't know, you're like 50? <laughs> A hundred and two. That's what I. Show them. That sounds right, right? It's got two yeah. numbers in it. I don't know. Um, yeah, and like I, I'm at the point in my life where I have like these distant, hazy childhood memories that I'm beginning to legitimately question are real. Mm -hmm. And I do what most people in our generation do, which is to Google that shit. So, like today, and I sent you this before we started today. Mm -hmm. Um. There was this video that I remember very clearly – or not a video, a commercial for a toy. And I remember waking up really – That was real, you're telling me. I thought that was something somebody made just to freak everybody out. That was, that was, was actually the commercial. Yeah, that was the oh, real deal. God. So it's called Pamela the Living Doll. And I don't know if anyone from our generation, the Generation Xers or maybe the even the, the – uh, you know, the late millennials, like the, oh, the early millennials. Early I guess. millennials, yeah, yeah, I was going to say. Early millennials yeah. might remember this commercial, but I remember getting up around six o'clock in the morning on a Saturday morning. And that was back in like 82, 83, whatever, when you got up to get the cartoons. Like there was yeah, a cartoon. The Saturday network. Saturday morning cartoons were on, yeah. bro. It wasn't yeah. not even Cartoon Network. It was on ABC. Yeah. Usually had the the Saturday morning cartoons and they had like the awesome um uh, bumps to go in between where they'd be like, after these messages we'll be right, right back back. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about, and some people will jog their memory if they're uh, if they're of that uh, the age to remember that stuff. Well, and there all the channels, like all the major networks, ran cartoons, so it was like a a guessing game for the networks to be like, what's going to pull the kids in the most? <laughs> um, you know, like is <laughs> it going to be? Maybe... Could I, could I throw something in here real quick? <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> oh, please, it's no. funny. Okay, no. no. Okay, go ahead. No. <laughs> oh, now you're gonna be you're gonna be salty now. I remember uh, for the Smurfs, the thing that came on before the Smurfs came on, they'd go, "What's three apples high and blue?" No, not your baby brother. Before your mom brought him home from the hospital, it's the Smurfs, and I was like, "That was such a." <laughs> That made no sense to me at that time, but it's so horrible now. That's fucked up, dude. That's yeah. really fucked up. Yeah, that's funny. Um, <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, you know, but you, you may continue now. <laughs> uh, well, oh, thanks. Awesome. But this commercial, I remember getting up really early in the morning and, you know, you had to, sometimes you got up early enough, you had to suffer through the farm report. So that sucked. Yeah. So I'm sitting there playing with Legos and waiting for the farm report to end. And finally the cartoons come on and I'm watching something. And it's, I think the cartoons would start at six 30 or seven. So I've got, of course, here's the prerequisites for the morning. You've got your Legos or other toys. You've got prime real estate camped out probably about four to six feet away from the television on the floor with mm -hmm. your toys. And you've got a big old bowl of cereal, a oh, big yeah. motherfucking bit bowl of cereal. And we're talking like and everything. Yeah. Marshmallows are like, you know, blueberry or like, I don't care, you know, something, but it's gotta be a sugary cereal and it has to have a prize inside. They don't even do that anymore with, with, with cereal. Do they? The prize inside? Uh, not anything like they give away shit like spoons and stuff like that, which is cool, I guess, if it's like a neat spoon or something like that. But it's not like it was. It's not like the heyday back in no. the day, man. Mm -hmm. Every single cereal box had some kind of toy in it or a game on the back. Or I remember Captain Crunch had this wild fucking like safari hunt that covered four box backs and you were supposed to win all this stuff and it was just it cap it was like Indiana Jones and it captured my my imagination completely. And I love that kind of stuff. But anyway, again I, I'm straying completely from the point. Um the point was that I'm up in the morning, there's no one here to help me as I'm watching this commercial come on about these aliens come out of a spaceship and approach this doll that's just inexplicably sitting on a stump in the woods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By itself. It's, you know, I'm sure that they're, you know, draw <laughs> draw your own conclusions here as to how it got there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who knows? I mean, it's Whatever almost, it is, it's probably terrifying. It, it is terrifying. And this thing is sitting there and it goes, 
one plus one is two or something like that. And they're like, oh, and they all think it's super cute. And and the one comes and picks it up or, go, or like goes to pick it up or whatever. And it goes, do you want to play with me? <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing. I know for a fucking fact that that's not vocoder. That's not like robot controlled voice where it's just ran like where it's saying things and reading on a, on, on a, on a <laughs> you know, like a text to speech. I know what tool. you are talking about. <laughs> yeah. This is just a recorded voice, but they couldn't get it good enough to actually sound human. It's, it's deeply, deeply buried within the uncanny Valley. Somehow it's scarier than the fucking aliens that are caressing and, and the aliens it. are hella are freaky in this commercial too. Considering that I refreshed my memory just before, we started here and looked at it. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, and that video, which I will be posting on dembeans.biz, um, the create one of the guys who created the actual alien masks uh, uh, actually comments quite a few times in it about nine years ago. And he's like, yeah, thanks for all your kind comments. Like I was really proud to take part in this and make the, the car, the things and he says that Doug Jones, played a role as one of the aliens. It was one of his first on-screen roles. Hmm. I don't know if you know who Doug Jones is. The name is very familiar to me. He has been um, in countless roles where he's been, which is called for a really skinny, flexible kind of physical actor kind of a character. Anyone okay. who's really, you know, it, very important to have physical care, physical actor um, capabilities, you know, like an Andy Serkis type. Where the 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 portrayal is ninety percent physicality. Doug Jones is the guy that they call on. He's super skinny, and uh, he played Mac Tonight. That was one of the characters that he played. Okay, I remember I'm, Mac Tonight very well. I'm struggling to remember other characters in movies that you might have seen. I don't know if you've seen uh, the movie. Um, John dies at the end. Have you seen that? <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I've seen part of that movie. I've not seen the entire movie. And that, that's the truth. I told you that once before. Like, it sounds like I'm trying to say like, oh, yeah, I watched part of it, but I never did. It, but I really did see part of that movie. Probably more than I'm saying that I did. But it's been so long since I saw it. I don't I can't remember. Well, he plays a role in it. He's the guy who gets in the back of the car and starts asking the main character, um, David, all these bizarre questions like, have you ever noticed that you only find one shoe in the middle of the road? <laughs> you know, like all these fucked up things that he says. And he's like openly weeping as he talks about a man who masturbated till he bled. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> <laughs> that makes me sad and makes me want to weep also. Another book that I need you to read when you get your Kindle is um, is John Dies at the End. You will absolutely love it. It's just right. great stuff. Great stuff. You made me, I mean, so, you've taken me on a trip down memory lane with those cartoons and everything like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was, I mean, and, and that was back at a time when I would say, oh, I'm always going to want to get up early. Ha, huh, I'm never going to want to sleep in. And then, you know, sometime around when puberty hit, that was the end of that. Yeah. I was like, much. why the fuck are you getting me up on Saturday? I don't have school. Yeah. And, you know, saying that to my parents when I was at that age would have gotten me slapped in the face. Plus, I, I grew up on, a, you know, on an actual, like, farmette where we had animals and everything. So, uh, and farmette is not a female farm, as you might have thought. It just means, that, like, a small farm. And mm -hmm. uh, we had we had animals and everything needed to be taken care of. So, it didn't matter if it was, you know, whatever day of the week it was or Saturday. It still needed to get done. <laughs> So you know, it didn't really matter much. I don't appreciate that you just assuming that I I gender assumed your farm. Well, you see, and I wasn't necessarily talking to you. We do have okay. an audience, remember? That's true. That's true. Everything's not about you. You know, you've done that multiple times where you've defended yourself to the audience because you weren't the guy I was talking to. <laughs> when it clearly, I know that. <laughs> when it clearly wasn't. So don't. Fucking start that well, shit with me. Well, you know me. what, man? Fucking hypocrisy is part of my overall charm. <laughs> mm, is it? Is it? Yes, I think it is. Good to I mean, know. That's what, that's what I think. Mm, 
No. That's My mom loves me, and that's all I need to know. <laughs> that's what sociopaths always tell themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Go fuck yourself. For, Takes one to know one. <clears throat> for me, I think the moment of crossing the boundary into true adulthood or young adulthood, I, I guess would be that moment when I realized I didn't give a fuck what time I got up on Christmas morning. Yeah. That was really, that was the turning point for me in a lot of ways. It was like one morning, like there were a couple of Christmas years where it was cool to not be interested. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I'd be up, but I'd pretend I want to sleep in because I didn't want to be, that kid i didn't want to show too much excitement because i was getting surly in my teenage years but at one point it was just like oh you know what would be an awesome christmas gift is if you just fucking let me sleep until like nine (laughs) that would be fucking rad if we could do that no tom come on we gotta do this you gotta take pictures your sister's been up for three hours she's driving me crazy Oh, All man, right. I wouldn't even you know. let my kids last three hours with that kind of stuff. I was I was always like, uh, once one of them got up, everybody fucking got up because then there was a greater chance with my children, I mean, as an adult, you know, not obviously when I was a kid, there's a greater chance that we're going to get all the excitement out of the way and then I can go take a nap. <laughs> so that's kind of how that works. My yeah. One of my Christmas gifts is that I have the ability to take a nap some you know if if i play my cards right right after that buttered turkey and the mashed potatoes and gravy man that's the time it's funny yeah. you know here we are on well, the then, precipice. well then i guess i get i get two naps then yeah here here we are right here on the edge of spring and we're being i think we're being um little uh nostalgic about christmas what's that say about our current situation i don't get nostalgic about nostalgic about christmas at the the break of of dune of dune at the break (laughs) of spring i would say that uh given the fact that we have been in the situation that we've been in for you know weeks um it's kind of just that uh for for uh, for me at least it's probably a a little bit of a coping mechanism because Mm. i'm trying to think of something positive and fun and like even for me right now i like i might not be able to go out and eat dinner or something like that but i can certainly go hop on my motorcycle and ride somewhere and i have Mm. to say i did see something super funny the other day um there was a, a a lady on a motorcycle doesn't have a helmet on Isn't wearing any gloves. I think she did have long pants and boots on, though, but she had a fucking uh, mask on. (laughs) I knew you were going to say that. As though the coronavirus was going to fly into her face as she drove down the road, which I guess technically, if you think about it, could maybe be possible. She's not worried about smashing her fucking her brain pan on the road or anything like that. She just got to make sure she doesn't get that, you know, that spittle in her face. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's like that's like when I see people smoking cigarettes on a motorcycle. I'm like, that cigarette's going to last literally 3.2 seconds. <laughs> it's just gonna burn down it's to a gone. nub. Yeah, <laughs> it's gone. I tried smoking when I was younger, and when I did smoke on a motorcycle one time, yeah, it didn't it didn't work out very well. Because not only, like, while it is burning at, at, at a fucking rapid pace, the smoke's all going right in your eyeballs. <laughs> so it's, you know, uh, might as well take a piss while you're at it, too, and let that f- smack you in the face while you're going down the road. <laughs> Same kind of a thing, I would think. You know, it's funny, we're, we're talking, about, uh, talking about that lady that was on the motorcycle also. I saw a guy walking into the store today. And uh, neither he nor his female companion had masks or anything. And I'm still I'm still astounded personally by the number of people I see that are not wearing masks. Like, I, do you want to know how this shit spreads? That's how it spreads. I, yeah, yeah. Because it's... you fucking people are taking no precautions whatsoever. But, but he was pulling rubber gloves out and was going to wear them. You know what? Uh, That's like wearing a condom, only only wearing one that covers the tip of your cock. I would say it'd be like wearing a condom that only covers your balls. <laughs> you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> it'll keep my balls clean, but you know, I'm not worried about the rest of it. I guess I don't. I don't know because that's essentially what it looked like to me. <laughs> it's really funny because condoms don't normally cover the balls. I know, but <laughs> this one did. That's why. I'm, that's how little sense it made. <laughs> I'll stop that semen from getting through by squeezing my balls really tight. So that is an accessory to the condom that really careful people wear. Yes, yes. What do we call that? It's called a, um, let me see, what can we call this now? The, um, the... Squ scrotal Squeezer 5000. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. See, that's a bit sens sensationalistic as a name. I, I think we need to simple it down, make it more... We're talking like this is a pharmacy product. So maybe right. the... Um... They can call it the, the oh, squeeze the method. The squeeze method for preventing pregnancy. No, the cradle. No man can ejaculate when their balls are being squeezed. No, that's not probably not true. I think that's quite the opposite. Cradle, the cradle. It sounds gentle. It's nice. Yeah, but the cradle sounds like something you might use if you had a hernia mm. that was sticking out. Okay. You know, like a truss. Why don't we call it? A <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, I got an electric truss. It's electric. <laughs> boogie woogie woogie. <laughs> I wish I knew more more of that song. And you figure I would. I mean, you figure I would because I heard that song at every single fucking school dance or and or, you know, including the prom. Yep. I've heard it at every wedding I've ever gone yep. to. <laughs> well, here's I think what that I remember it actually, of it. They actually rank in the top ten of songs that I've ever heard because I've heard them frequently enough at those things. You I didn't need to hear them any other time. It. It's, it's electric. electric. Boogie, 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 boogie. You can't eat it. It's electric. <laughs> boogie, boogie, boogie. That's very true. It's really neat and you like it. Boogie, 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 boogie. <laughs> she taught me how to boogie. And that's all I remember. <laughs> that's all I remember is some guy going. I'm sure, I'm sure you just somebody just got real proud right there. <laughs> they remember Hearing that this, rendition. Yeah, they remember this song. Kind of. <laughs> well, it's like someone someone who knows all the lyrics to a song by Snow. You know, like like. You kind of uh, live on boom, a boom boom now. <laughs> yeah, but knowing all the lyrics my... perfectly. Something 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 something. I look at boom boom now. <laughs> Which I'm pretty sure is a uh, is a reference to Cunnilingus, but I you know. I'm not even knows? sure because like licky boom boom would boom booms are usually poop, so maybe that's actually slang oh, for for rimming for yeah, rimming, an... you know? Yeah, analingus. <laughs> <laughs> you lick that fucking balloon knot and see what comes out. Hopefully nothing, if you're lucky. Yeah, yeah, unless you're into that. You know, again, I mean, I'm... you know, if somebody, you know, farts in your mouth, I guess you kind of asked for it. Fart in my mouth, I want you to love me. <laughs> if you can do it, that would be awesome. Let's Let's take a step back, though, and talk about the wonderful... Um, you know, um, maturing thing that was a high school, not even high school dance, like a junior high dance. Oh yeah. Nothing, nothing like going into a typically stiflingly hot room mm. and standing along the wall in the dark with like light flashing on you because they had a disco ball or some other kind of thing. It's some I mean, strobe lasers, lights. Yeah, yeah. La lasers weren't really. Uh, used that often when we were in junior high and stuff like that as they are now because I think back then we all still thought that lasers would you know would fucking burn three or something like that well they were expensive they just yeah. weren't they weren't commercially available like they are now you know now you can get all kinds of cool shit at Spencer's gifts that fires lasers all over the room yeah yeah but, I uh, remember I know what you're talking about you know it was strobe lights and like red lights yeah and placement of like of like yeah, you know, you had a disco really balls. cool DJ. They had a uh, a traffic light. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and it, and it would flash and stuff. I yeah. just I always remember that I would go into these things being very timid, and by the end of the night, I was just like, "Fuck it, I don't care," and I'd be doing real stupid shit. Yep. But I usually try to avoid, <laughs> um, you know, getting out there and actually dancing with people who knew how to dance because I knew that I would be totally embarrassed. But I, I one one dance sticks out to me. We used to go to uh, camp when I was in uh, grade school and the system that I was in, all the grade schools, which I think there was five of them, all got together and went to uh, this camp and stayed there for a week. And uh, one of the, I think maybe the second to last night, we did like a square dance type thing. And I can mm. remember that I was running around the room like an idiot, like running. And then I'd slide on my knees and I was like jumping all over the place and putting <laughs> shit on my head and everything else. <laughs> and Basically acting like someone who was not old enough to be commingling with the children who were there. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, that was yeah, that, that sounds was, that awfully was the, familiar. Hit the nail on the head. I mean, I'm still like that sometimes, but they, uh, I, I just like for one, the one dance that sticks in my head more than anything else was definitely that one. Definitely that one. Because everybody's like, "Oh, look at Mike, he's acting all crazy and everything," and I'm like, "Yeah, I was, yeah, I was the entertainment." Watch this idiot. Get him hopped up on some sugar and watch him run around the room like a, like a fucking, uh, I don't know something. You know, it's harder. It's harder to come up with good as you become more like socially aware. It's mm-hmm. a lot harder to come up with a. I was acting like a. No, I wasn't acting like that. That would be offensive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I was acting like a fool. Okay, a Tasmanian I guess that devil. Works. How about that? Yeah, I was there acting you go. like a Tasmanian devil. Oh, I, I may have even been spitting and snarling at this point too. I don't know. But there was a girl that I absolutely had the had the hots for back in that day, and I think I was trying to impress her and. And, I mean, what girl wouldn't be impressed by a fucking 75-pound, you know, short <laughs> kid with a bad haircut running around and acting like a fool, you know, in front of everybody? I mean, why? <laughs> I'm sure that that's a, that's a fucking panty dropper move if I've ever heard of one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember my middle school dance, like a typical middle school dance for me is I show up hopeful. Oh like, yeah, everybody. I mean, you you don't go if you don't have hope yeah. that you're going to at least get one girl to look in your direction and maybe dance with you. Right. But here's the thing, and never did I ask, nor did I make myself accessible in a way that made someone want to ask. Yeah. Because when you're acting like a complete twat the mm-hmm. entire evening, People don't want to be associated with you yeah, other than the people yeah. who are goading you on. And that's the people I hung out with at my dances where people were like, well, I dare you to go do this. All right, Those cool. are also the people that turn their back on you when you do what they ask you to do and more. Mm. So you ultimately end up by yourself at the end mm-hmm. anyway. So, yeah, you know, I remember. And so, yeah, so typical dance. So I show up. I spend – because I'm both an AV geek and a music geek, probably spent about half my time actually at the DJ's table, just chatting checking out them what, up, chatting them up, and asking what and looking at what music they had. Yep. Or just you know just watching them at work because it was just kind of cool, you know, like oh wow that's how he does that, like you know just sort of getting into that, or 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 you know being up in front of the DJ place just to fuck around in front of the strobe lights. Like I didn't care about dancing. I just wanted to look cool in front of the strobe lights. Um, (laughs) Another part of the night, because again, this is middle school and I was incredibly immature in middle school. I mean, I remember in my first year of middle school, maybe even my second year, I was still playing with GI Joes. So, you know, I hadn't really grown into. Wait a second. Is there a problem with that? Not really, but I'm just saying a okay, lot of kids okay. by that age really weren't doing that anymore. At least as far it as I know. It was their loss. Yeah, really. G.I. Joes were fucking awesome to play with. Yep. FYI. Yeah, they were. Um, as long as that goofy little black rubber band inside of them didn't break, then they were, you know, you'd have to put them in sand and act like they got blown to pieces or something. Yeah, they were the <laughs> wounded. They were your wounded troops. Yep. Yeah, Pretty to keep much. Them. Yeah. This one suffered... Wounds suffered a, a 
terrible injury. <laughs> oh my like goodness. Disemboweled. Um Yeah, so then I would I would stalk so here's the thing, I would I would pick a girl. And this isn't as bad. <laughs> this is such a horrible story. <laughs> this isn't like okay, I know this is gonna sound like a fucking serial killer, but it it isn't. Yes, it was you, more you already about do. Me entertaining myself. Okay, yeah, I'm digging deeper, aren't I? Um so I would just select someone that I knew, one of my classmates who happened to be a girl. (laughs) (laughs) And then I would seek them out like the Terminator. And I'd pretend I had like this cool screen overlay on my vision and be like, and when I'd find them, I'd just go over. And once I got there, I didn't know what to do. So I'd say or do something stupid. And then I'd inevitably get kicked in the testicles or told to fuck off. (laughs) <laughs> and and it depended on what stupid thing I did. Like one time I just started like I don't know what I did to deserve it. I think I said something really offensive to this girl and I just got kneed in the testicles and I fell over on the ground and everyone's laughing and then I get up and I run away. And that was like <laughs> yeah, that was like a typical middle school dance for me. And I didn't go to high school dances. At all. Well, if you remember correctly, I want to say that where we went to school, there was literally one dance and then prom. That was pretty much it. And I didn't go to my prom. They did like one single dance through our four years there that was not prom. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know quite why. Like to justify it now, why did I not go to prom? Like, I could tell you a bunch of reasons, but it's all going to sound like me saying, uh, well, I felt left out, so I just chose not to go. Mm. And I don't even know if that's not the case. But to me, it just seemed like a useless rite of passage. And by that point in my life, I was getting to the point where I was thinking about things in terms of like, I make my own traditions. I don't need other people's traditions. Mm -hmm. And I'd always been a free thinker. But the fact that I didn't have a girlfriend probably had more to do with the fact that I didn't go to prom than anything else because there was no one I particularly wanted to ask except one girl and she had a guy. And I'd already been working on – working like that's something you can do right (laughs) you know what i mean that's such a childish mentality but i was working a girl you know what i mean like trying to get her to realize that her guy was a jerk and he was a jerk but it wasn't my place to try and you know what i mean like it was an idiotic pursuit that uh, you know just uh, inexperience and and uh a sense of entitlement Makes you think you can do that, I guess. Uh, to a certain, you know, I mean, I guess it is Here's what it thing. is. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. The way I say that is because I had an ulterior motive, which was to get with this girl. Oh, if yeah. I, if it was just me saying, hey, this guy's fucking a- an asshole and I'm going to fuck him up um, and I don't care about you know, whether or not you want me to, I'm going to do it because he's, he's hurting you. That that's an act of friendship, but this was an act of me wanting something. It was a quid pro quo. It was a childish and immature way of thinking, but I'd had one girlfriend up to that point and I didn't even really want to date her. I just got pressured into it. So I wasn't ready for that shit. I wasn't ready to, I, there's a good reason that no one wanted to date me is because on the outside, despite you know, in, in you know, and despite the uh, relative lack of worldly experience that any of us had, mm-hmm. I was throwing off major signs that said, "This kid doesn't know what the fuck he's doing, and he's not a good boyfriend <laughs> yet. <laughs> Give him about five years, and maybe he'll be, you know, someone you want to consider. But right now, this kid doesn't have his shit together, and he's just gonna treat you like an object." <laughs> It's the truth. Well, you pretty much just described every uh, high school boy in their right. relationship. I guess. Yeah. Maybe I'm always a little harder on myself, but that's because I, I don't bullshit myself about who and what I am. You know, I'm, I'm, I am what I am. Okay. You know, I, 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 I have dirty thoughts, Mike. Still? Mm-hmm. I even tried calling a priest. He said, he said, that's not going to, I'm not going to be able to help you. I've dirty thoughts, the likes of which you can't imagine. 
Yeah, right, that's that's <laughs> certainly the case. <laughs> I like, I know what boys want. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not me. <laughs> I know what boys like. Boys like, <laughs> boys like me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, That's making, pretty, yeah. yeah That's we're funny making, though. <laughs> we're making light of a horrible, horrible thing. Uh, e- well, yes, and only because it's it's uncomfortable to... Uh, it is uncomfortable. And here's why it's uncomfortable without getting super political, which I always say. It's like, you know, do. at yeah. this point, it really is. I, it is almost like saying I ain't racist, but so I ain't political, but... Um, <laughs> It's not because we assume that every priest does this. It's because oh, no. the, it's because the church just pushes it aside. That's the reason why we dwell on this subject. And you can't deny that, even if you're a supporter of the church, you have to admit that happens. Mm-hmm. It's gross. And it's something that if you can't deal with, if it makes you really angry, you should really maybe talk to your priest literally talk to them and be like yo how the hell do i reconcile this it's fucked up it's real fucked up well it's it's really you know? fucked up that the church spent centuries hiding it and protecting the people who were doing it yeah and uh and everything else yeah. i mean even till modern times like oh well we sent him to another parish so right. you basically just gave him fresh meat yeah, 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 yeah. It's like sending a wolf to a new – it's literally – they call them the flock. So, yeah, you're sending a wolf to the new flock where they're, yeah. where they're blissfully unaware. Because, you know, I don't know about you, but I seem to remember that there's this whole thing where when a registered sex offender gets moved to a new neighborhood, they have to go and post something somewhere eh, that stays – It doesn't th- count if you're a priest, though. I guess not. Yeah. That's – um. Maybe because they're not prosecuting. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. That's a problem, isn't it? No, no, not at all. Well, it's the, you know, uh, which we obviously aren't going to get into, but the whole separation of church and state and things like that. uh, When when there is an issue in the upper levels of not being able to separate yourself from religion, it bleeds down to things like that to say, oh, well, we couldn't prosecute a practitioner of, of the religion that we hold so dear and, and anger the God that, uh, that, you know, that takes, that made everything and takes care of everything all the time, you know, so it's, it's all one yeah, vicious. Why does the God become a bullshit? Why does the God become uh, Old Testament when something like that happens? Because well, it seems to me that if yeah. that were the case, then he would smite that person straight up. It would, would be no, there would be no need for human invention intervention. It's not the it's not the New Testament God who's kind of like, no, yo, y'all just be chill, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's the Old Testament God, like I'm gonna fuck you in the ass for what you just did. Well, hold on, and then you fuck. also have you know the the God of Leviticus that uh, says you can't have tattoos or eat pork or any of that kind of stuff. Yeah, also, have long like it, hair. It, it, yeah, it, it really it really depends on on which book of of uh, a fairy tale you choose to read from that particular day, I guess. And a lot of them like to cherry pick from all the books, so that way you know there's always a point to be proven. Because if something's written in a book, it must be true. So I'm assuming that there is really a Quidditch league somewhere because that's a real thing. Cause it's written in a fucking book. Well, I, 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 I don't know. I, I think maybe you're being a, a bit harsh. I am. Um, maybe you're doing it for comedic value, but I'm bit. always, I, I, I don't know. Like I understand your frustration with organized religion, but I don't think that at it's root. It's bad. I think, I think that it is like anything else. Okay. Maybe I want to take that back. I think that out on the fringes where it becomes a community thing, the community mm-hmm. church, I think it's quite innocent usually. It's usually at the top where these things are problems. And oh, the reason yeah. is because at the be- I think all religious uh, dogma ultimately is about control. I was getting ready to say every, every religion is based in controlling people. And their actions, and their property, and their lives. 
Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's it's about controlling everything. You're controlling everybody with fear. Uh huh. Fear right. that if fear. you don't do what you're supposed to, uh, there's a lightning bolt going to come down from the sky. And I guess if you've been struck by lightning, I apologize because you know maybe you think that that had something to do with it, but I, I doubt it did. I'm going to say not just luck. fear, but also guilt. Oh and yeah, I naturally. Feel like fear can be denied after a while. But guilt can eat at you for a lifetime. So well, instilling will... a strong sense of guilt over uh, things and, and, and in general anything perceived bad and then giving a doctrine of what is bad, mm -hmm. that's a great recipe for instilling lifelong guilt. And I know that almost everyone I know who, who was raised as a Christian at least has a struggle with that a little bit, you know. Even yeah, I if mean, they themselves didn't believe it because they were raised as though they did. Yeah, when I was younger, I struggled with some of that stuff a lot more. But then as I got older, I got a lot more of a, uh, well, if there is this higher being um, and this higher being, you talk about guilt. One of the big guilty things that people talk about is, is sex and masturbation and procreating because according to the according to the Catholic Church at least, you're only supposed to have sex – to procreate. Right. And you could find the most devout Christian out there, Catholic, and say, so you've only had sex the times that you were trying to conceive a child? And I guarantee you that, that would, the answer could not be no. You know, do, do you know why your penis is shaped like it is and why it fits in your hand so well? Because <laughs> you're supposed to masturbate. That's why it's like that. That's almost I'm just like saying. I don't need to feel guilty about something that's beautiful and natural. That's that that almost sounds a little bit like the Kirk Cameron argument for the banana, though. <laughs> well, hey, if if you are so inclined, hot dogs, sausages, bananas, broom handles, <laughs> these things all fit into that category as well. well sure. You want to go jerk off a broom handle? Have at it, man. I, I think you <laughs> may have misinterpreted what I was saying. I, don't, I, I might have, but I ran off with it in my own direction. I don't know that Kirk, Kirk, Kirk Cameron is, is necessarily um, advocating masturbating fruit. I feel like he might be. <laughs> no, his argument – okay, so he's like a born-again – Yeah, I know. Event, he's, event, yeah. Well, maybe the listeners don't though. So uh, Kirk Cameron, the uh, – star of the show Growing Pains in the Excellent 80s. show, by the way. Um, yeah, show me that smile again. <laughs> I, loved, I, loved, uh, <laughs> I loved Growing Pains. I wasn't yeah. allowed to watch it because my grandmother, when I was at her house, because she said that it was, it was too mature for me. And I don't think I've reached the maturity level where I could watch it still when his best friend's name was Boner. I, <laughs> right. <laughs> Come on yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so Kirk Cameron is a born again Christian and I think an evangelical or Baptist Christian. I can't remember which, but he's definitely one of the more hardcore branches or sects of Christianity that mm -hmm. are out there. And he's been on like numerous like videos for, for people like people's ministries where he talks about the banana being the ultimate fruit <laughs> because it was, it, it has a handle to open it. It has a, 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 a wrapper and oh, it yeah. fits perfectly in your hand. It's proof of God. And what I love about that is the article I read on fucking cracked.com. No less <laughs> that said, you know, all here's all these interesting fruits and vegetables that we've eaten throughout the years. And they were as they would have been in their original form before we started to cultivate them. And bananas, when they were uncultivated before we learned to farm and to genetically manipulate with mm -hmm. cross, you know, pollination and all that shit, bananas were these thick flavorless mashy like more like like potatoes almost and they starchy had things big yeah starchy things and they had big fat seeds in them like the size of like like well that sounds like my penis right off <laughs> yeah yeah just chock full of nuts <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite coffee names by the way mm -hmm. yeah i don't drink coffee but i love the name so 
I mean, so basically Kirk, Kirk Cameron's argument, you know, uh, again, completely like a lot of the really far flung religious fanatics of every uh, flavor mm-hmm. um, completely ignore all bodies of evidence other than their own <laughs> personally cherry picked series of of facts and factoids. <laughs> you mean to tell me that they were not enjoying delicious bananas and plantains in the time of Christ exactly the way they are today? As far as I can tell, the only thing those motherfuckers ate was bread and fish. And the only yeah. thing they drank was wine. Everybody had some real interesting uh, breath in those days. Can you imagine just, you know, like that's that's your that's your drink all day long. Like the water is filthy. People who have yeah. really clean water are probably wealthy. And it's certainly not something that you find most of the places. Like you have to like know of a spring. So you get like a water canteen, like a big one, and you fill that fucker up and mm-hmm. you live off that. Which at that you... point would have probably been a goat's bladder or something similar to that. Yeah, exactly. So you've got like a couple bladders full of water on your back. And other than that, most of the time you're drinking wine. Because it's 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 literally easier to get wine than it is to get fucking fresh clean water. We get no shit faced. Yeah. Although I yeah. wonder, I'm assuming some of it also had to almost be just like grape juice minus the sugar, because you know, like I were, were kids getting shit faced in these days. <laughs> were they also drinking wine? <laughs> I mean, was this like if fucking maybe that's where the whole priest thing started because there's a bunch of drunk children running around, <laughs> and he's like, "Well, they'll never know, and I won't tell." So that, you know, that and Yahweh's <laughs> Yahweh's inexplicable fetish for washing feet. I've never understood it's, that. No, neither have I. And I, I've had the, I've been in church, and they were like, "Oh, we're doing the washing of the feet today," and I'm like, "No, you're not. <laughs> Those are my motherfucking feet, and that's weird." Like yeah, where that's... does foot fetish? Where does foot fetish come into all of this? At especially when you see the you know gnarly and snaggled some people's toes are. Oh come the holy, see my feet. They're made for you. They're made for me. Oh holy feet, they wash and clean my feet today. My feet today. Is that is, is that a real song, or are you just making that shit up? I'm just making that shit up. <laughs> okay, because it feels like it could have been real. I don't know because was they it, have. Well, I mean, it was soulless enough to be like typical. Not right, huh? you just have to end it with like, oh, 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 man, and then you're you good. What. I'll tell you what, like that's like the the Church of England type shit. I don't know if you know, you know Eddie Izzard, but he always talked about like you know how boring the Church of England like. Amen. Hallelujah. This <laughs> <laughs> is bored. Oh my goodness, I'm so tired. Mm. Yeah, I, I had a hard time when I was a kid staying awake during mass because, I mean, a lot of times, especially like Easter was the worst time to go since, you know, we're in that season right now. Because normal mass, you might only have to kneel twice. Hmm. Really, I mean, you kneel when you come in, and you kneel after communion to sit there and think about whatever sins you've committed and how you should be embarrassed and filled with grief and uh, self-loathing. You know, yeah, self-loathing and everything. Yes, you you get on your knees and you pray. But um, Easter Mass, you literally stand, sit, kneel, stand, sit, kneel, stand, sit, kneel. It's like the whole time, and it's like normal Mass would be like an hour long. It's like two fucking hours. So you got like a calisthenic workout and really got some work in on your knees and your calves and maybe your glutes even. If you if you did a little kegel squeezing, except for not doing it in your kegel area, doing it in your butt area there, you could really tone up your cheeks doing that stuff. I had a friend who was Catholic who killed himself in the summer of 93. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember going to the mass or the service and the priest trying to talk about God's will. And I just remember getting so angry. Well, I'm like, at times yeah. like that, they say your faith is tested to a new level, uh-huh. but in reality, it's not really your faith that's tested. It's your willingness to believe that 
and um, you know, I got into this the last time we talked about it that mm-hmm. this that this being would allow things like this to happen would allow somebody right. to suffer so greatly that right. they felt the only way that they could relieve the the suffering was to end everything and mm-hmm. uh, i i can say that i had my my faith shaken uh if i ever had any by events in my personal life right and at that moment, the only thing you can think to say when somebody says, oh, well, you know, they're with God or God, blah, blah, or whatever, I'd say, fuck God. Mm-hmm. And whether whether or not that's – I mean that's very strong language to use, and I apologize if I offend anybody with it, but – at a time like that, uh, I mean, that would be like uh, seeing somebody in your life murdered mm. and saying, oh, well, at least you still have, you know, uh, the, the other person's still there and you can hate them. You know, like it, it just yeah. it it blows my mind. Yeah. Well, I think at the root of it for me. Here's the truth. I well, really thank think... you for not lying to me. <laughs> I knew you were going to say something like that. I I was just sort of prefacing. I feel like at the root of it, even though I'm an agnostic and I don't disbelieve God, and I've shared at length what I think God is Mm -hmm. as opposed to what I think God isn't, which I think I have a lot more ideas about what it is than what it isn't. I think what it isn't is most of the things we assume, you know, Um, but – I'm angry at God for not being what they told me he would be. Yeah. Well, that's I the think... truth. I'm angry at the idea of God. So when people bring it up, I'm like, don't bring up to me that what I consider to be a bitter disappointment that the guy upstairs that was supposed to be watching over me isn't really the the picture of God that I yeah. have now. Yeah. The picture I have of God now is this faceless universal intelligence that doesn't really intervene that's not very helpful it's not soothing because it doesn't promise anything it doesn't promise redemption it doesn't promise safety or sanctity or anything nope. it, it if anything it tells me the universe is essentially chaos and it's all just happening and no one's at the helm. And that's terrifying. It doesn't bring me solace. My point of view does not bring me solace. And I know a lot of people who are religious say, well, then why do you believe it? It's like, for the same reason I believe in storms. Because they fucking happen. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, you, um, you understand that everybody uh, that has an opinion of God – as it is, and and again, I I don't I don't not believe in a higher power myself. Right. I just refuse to believe that it is the manipulative, angry, vindictive tyrant, uncaring, yeah, tyrant that that it's been it's been uh, fed to me as all this time because uh, the leaders in that in in the religious world, at least in Catholicism, um, basically make it out that. You know, it, it, whatever it is that that they can use it as a power against you with to make you fearful is what it is. And then at times like that, then they're like, oh, well, you know, God still loves you and mm-hmm. and everything else. And I'm like, well, where the fuck was this love at right now? And why have you not been telling me that kind of stuff all the time? Like it doesn't it it doesn't it doesn't m- blend it feels like an abusive relationship. It is definitely an abusive relationship, and it's the kind that, that you're afraid to walk away from. I'm sorry I hit you. I promise I won't do it again, but don't ever tell anyone what happens yeah. in this house. I'll tell you my – we should wrap up, but I'll tell you my quick take on Yahweh, uh, the the monotheistic Abrahamic <laughs> I appreciate God. the fact that you keep calling, calling God Yahweh because I haven't heard that. Uh, except in very sparing usage in all my years, like there was a song that mentioned hey. Yahweh, and other than that, everybody called it. You know, it was it was, it was Jesus, or it was or it was God, and that if was I, it. If I call him God, that assumes that he's God. I'm not convinced that Yahweh is God. I think he's a demiurge, but I, we can get into that <laughs> in another episode. <laughs> however, the however, fucking lich. However, um, 
That's not quite the same as a demigod, but but yeah, he mu- his son might have been a lich. <laughs> so, um, I was completely unaware of that word existing until you show until you told it to me that one day. So yeah, I just um, I thought I would throw it in there. Uh, so here is a being that created all of existence, <clears throat> and it said, "Not good enough." I'm going to make beings, other beings to interact with. So it created the God, the, 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 the angels, the seraphim, the Nephilim, all the hosts, the heavenly host. And these multitudinous beings all served him without fail or flaw. Perfect in every way. So he said, it's not good enough. I need to make something with its own will. Something that has to choose to love me and Mm -hmm. obey me. And it did. And in so doing, it alienated its own creations, the heavenly host. And because it knew it needed a nemesis to make humanity as he creation, his creation, Mm-hmm. really be, behave within the dynamic range that he was looking for. He gave Satan the will and his angels the will to de- to deceive and to deny him. If they had not been given that by God's will alone, they would not have been capable of it because God, because angels do not have free will period they do not they are acting under orders whether that's, they that's my understanding of it yeah. right so they're programmed like machines to do what they're told so he changed their programming to give us an adversary something to punish us if we choose not to love him would i bow me and serve that i would rather rot in hell for all eternity than give myself to a being so childish and tyrannical as to put my existence in the balance for its ego? Fuck that thing. Fuck that thing. That's mm-hmm. not a loving God. That's a no. child. That's a child. I happen to think that Mother Nature is is the ultimate embodiment of uh, of anything godly, in my opinion, and I'm not saying agree. Mother Nature is real or anything, but the no, fact but that I the know sun, what you're saying and the I fact agree. that the planet rotates and the sun rises and plants grow and animals live and everything else, and it's all the circle of life that obviously humans have bastardized beyond recognition anymore. But in nature, it happens still, and that's uh, that to me is where is where true godliness would exist. I will end with this prior to, you know, I, I, one little thing here and I encourage, I encourage the listeners to engage us with this because I really, I am curious if you are a person that has religious police and if, whether, whether you agree with us, whether you think that I'm being blasphemous in what I've said and what Tom has said, et cetera, explain one small, simple question for me. This is the only question that I ever ask. And I have yet, after all these years, to get an answer. I have my own theory on it, but I want to see what other people have to say, what your answer is. If God is all-forgiving and forgives everything that anybody does, why is there a hell? Why is there a hell for people who don't do what God wants if he's all-forgiving? And you know, I, Tom, I, say, I don't amen. want you to answer this either. I'm just going to say amen, dude. <laughs> yes. Because that's the one that gets me the hardest. That is the biggest hypocritical thing, Mm -hmm. and I would like for somebody to explain it to me in a way that I can understand. So uh, I've had discussions with people, and one particular instance pops out in my mind, but uh, you know, that's a story for another time. If you want to send an answer to Mike's question or anything else to us, comments, concerns, complaints, gifts – Sexual favors. Orders. Orders for things yep. we don't sell yet. Yep. 
or may never sell, you can send them to storytimewithtomandmike at gmail.com, or you can visit our website, dembeans.biz, D-E-M-B-E-A-N-S dot B-I-Z, where our contact form exists, along with links to all of our social media, all Woo! of the places that you can get to our spa- our our podcast, including YouTube links, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, any single podcast application that you choose to use, we can be found there. And uh, I am seeing the numbers increasing pretty much every week. Yeah, um, I'm thank seeing more, you so more, much. Yeah, I'm seeing more return listeners. Now, there's not many, you know, still numbers are small, but they're growing. And the fact is that people are really listening. And that means that we're we're doing something right. If it's only seven people, six people, so be it. That's still six people who maybe – their day is a little better because of this podcast. Even if I it's because so. we're so terrible that they want to sit and laugh at us for an hour. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> I don't mind being a punching bag. I've kind of been one my whole life. <laughs> I, I appreciate uh, self-depreciating humor myself, so right. I will just take that in stride. Yep. So with that, I would say thank you for listening to Storytime with Tom and Mike. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed giving it to you. Ah, I don't really have one this time, so bye. Bye.